Hello tout le monde, c'est Enora22, j'espère que vous allez bien. On se retrouve aujourd'hui pour Bacon Pines, un jeu édité par Follow Traveler et développé par Hiding Spot. Installez-vous confortablement sur votre canapé, votre lit, votre chaise de bureau ou sur vos WC, peu importe. Let's go Ok, donc là, on a obtenu une sorte de fin différente. Là, on n'a pas utilisé ça. Là, on a utilisé tout. Donc, en fait, il nous manquerait cette partie-là pour Strange. Il faudrait qu'on fasse quelque chose de Strange. Well, time to bust out the Strange. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. person at the warehouse, the strange ooze and what it did to Iggy, was Rolo caught up in all of this? glanced toward Luca. Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4 Our harvest awaits. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath.
Luca was alone. The house was empty. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him, without turning. He's, why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. But I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Lucas scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go. Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run. The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Rollo's voice was coming through more clearly now, but some words were still just static. The signal went silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response, his pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Rollo's voice began to fade. With that, the signal died for good. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. <laughs> Mr. 
The three shared a determined look. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and a sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Two boys shared a mischievous grin. Luca placed a sinker on the line. Sometimes the best stuff is at the bottom of the pond. Ok, donc il y a un succès où on doit pêcher pardon, toutes sortes de poissons. Et en fait, euh, du coup, je pense qu'il faudrait qu'on revienne à chaque fois avec différents charmes. Mais tic... Ouais, ça marche pas des masses. On va essayer avec ça quand même. On ce que je pêche avec. Et on a pêché un petit canard. Bon. Ok. Donc là, on a utilisé les trois charmes qu'on avait pour l'instant en disposition. Donc en fait, à chaque fois qu'on aura un charme différent, on va essayer de revenir pour pêcher un poisson différent. Comment est-ce que je peux revenir en arrière <rire> Ok. Bon, tant pis. Allez. Hop, on y va.
Donc, ce qui est assez bien dans le jeu, au final, c'est qu'il y a plusieurs choix à faire. Enfin, on a des charmes, ces charmes vont nous donner plusieurs directions dans l'histoire, mais ça reste assez linéaire, au fond. Et euh, c'est plutôt pas mal. En plus de ça, il y a du suspense. On a une enquête à mener, donc euh, c'est vraiment, vraiment bien fait, je trouve, ce petit jeu. Dommage, juste pas de traduit en français. Ok. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. Oh là là, ils sont combien là He slumped to his knees. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rollo had constructed his MCDC, the Mission Control Defense Cannon. Hmm. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. Thank you. 
Ok, donc on est en train de vivre une sorte de conspiration de la ville, là. Euh... La hyène, elle me fait trop penser aux hyènes de, du roi lion, avec ce sourire, là. <rire> Lucas Grit tightened on the MCDC. Okay. Lucas mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? He wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Ok, donc là, on a encore un choix décisif. <laughs> Et on a que ça, on a que fight. On va aller fighter. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Lucas summoned his most insolent demeanor. turned his back on the two boys. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. Ok, donc là, la seule possibilité qu'on a, c'est cet embranchement-là, puisque le reste est coché. Donc ouais, on va aller par là. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Lucas swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence.
Ok, donc là on va devoir livrer à la confiture à Monsieur Noncreed, Madame Fratelli, Monsieur Tolliver. Je me souviens même plus quelle tête ils ont, mais on va essayer de la retrouver. of his sandals. Eris Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children, and had a way of making questions seem like demands. Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Dawn had dreams of becoming a big-time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand.
Ok, donc là on a atteint un nouveau point dans la ville. Toujours avec notre pot de confiture. Donc, quand même euh, look look around. Ah She leaned forward and pinched Lucas cheek. Ah, nouveau charm, break. Lucas shifted the basket uncomfortably. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. Ok, donc on a livré déjà notre premier pot de confiture. Là, on peut rien faire. Ça sera le deuxième, je pense. Ah non. Là, on peut rien faire. Ça, c'est pas Monsieur Toliver, je crois pas. Hein. Alors, bon. Pas un bon maire. Ok, donc on a livré un pot de confiture sur trois. L'autre, je sais qu'il est vers le. Alors, est-ce que si on descend. Ah ouais, il est là-bas. Je crois que c'est lui, monsieur Oliver, là. Coucou Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. He leaned in a bit further. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. He reached forward and snapped <laughs> up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. He leaned in for a final whisper. Hey, y a un, une grosse pastèque là. Oh, ça y est, we did it. On a kické. Ah non, bah c'est pas celui-là. <rire> On a kické un Walter Meloun. Ah bah si c'était celui-là, un Walter Meloun, c'était celui qu'il fallait kicker. Ok, tant mieux. Et puis il y en a un autre, c'est Watermelon Bongo. On va cliquer plusieurs fois, on va voir si ça déclenche quelque chose. Ouais On a cliqué un Watermelon 20 fois. Alors, je ne sais pas si c'était ce, ce, celui-là. Ah oui, Funky Music. Et on a obtenu en plus le charme. Euh, smack. 
Donc, nous avons obtenu le Watermelon, euh, les deux succès Watermelon, les deux succès en lien avec le, la pastèque. Euh, et en plus, on a un charme magnifique. Ok. Donc, on n'est pas si mal que ça au final hein. pas si mal que ça au final on va voir si on peut faire quelque chose de particulier au musée est-ce qu'on peut rentrer dans le musée on peut rentrer dans le musée d'histoire magnifique Without telling the story of one sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's fertilizer company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then tragedy struck, a scientific experiment gone wrong. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. Together, we will follow his example and grow a bountiful future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Capital Riverman's Fund. Okay. Bon, bon on a entendu une histoire sympa. Voilà. Alors, on va livrer les derniers pots de confiture, du coup. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Nuncreed snatched the basket from Luca. Okay. Donc là, on a... On a donc euh, apporté tous les pots de confiture qu'on devait apporter. Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. <rire> Apparemment, il faut cinq amis. 
Pourquoi pas Ok, donc on a une autre mission. On va juste, avant d'aller euh, rejoindre notre nouvelle amie. Euh... Ah, un autre personnage. Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit. All right. On va juste retourner à la librairie parce que c'est open. Je vais juste voir si on peut cliquer sur d'autres trucs. motion to the book in front of him. Mm -hmm. Ok, donc là il n'y a plus rien à faire à la librairie. Je vérifie juste pour pas oublier des charmes. Enfin, des petits jetons plutôt. Ok, donc, on va pouvoir aller. On ne peut rien faire. Ok. Je vais juste voir si en pêchant on a quelque chose. De... Ah Non, c'était pas prévu qu'on aille par là. <rire> Mr. Kerr winked with a wry smile. He gave Luca an energetic thump on the shoulder. Voilà, voilà. Oh, j'ai oublié d'aller pêcher, c'est pas grave. Les dessins sont super bien faits dans le jeu. J'aime bien. Back 
took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. Okay. Chapter four. Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nelly was the one who eventually broke the silence. Ilona nervously gestured toward the boxes. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. Beck slammed her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Ok, donc là on a notre choix à faire et on a... Les nuages au-dessus commençaient à... Bah oui. For him as the Pardon, j'ai coupé. <laughs> Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. Et ben voilà, il pleut.
on va pouvoir fouiner. Trop bien. On adore les jeux, on fouine. Voilà, on fouine, on se parti. Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. Luca wiped his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. Elle est en train d'analyser un morceau de chewing gum. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. Ok, donc elle a analysé un morceau de chewing gum qu'elle a mâché 47 fois. Donc c'est très précis comme étude ça. Luca flicked at one of the toggles. to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Ah, Sham! Qui pue? He flipped open the attached card. Est-ce que ça t'a fait mal Oui, plus que je m'y attendais. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Luca let out a feral scream that echoed into the night. Her voice dropped to a trembling whisper. Brushed off her shirt and straightened up. Bon, euh, elles ont pas eu tort, hein. De temps en temps, je pense que hurler sous la pluie, ça peut être pas mal. À essayer la prochaine fois. As abruptly as it began, the storm abated.
Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Chapter 5 Friendly Feud Je crois qu'on n'est pas été aussi loin, hein. The air was heavy with a hard rain's residue. The smell of wet things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone. Not even Rollo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rollo was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse. Alors, on va retourner au treehouse. On va juste checker à chaque fois si on trouve des choses. A juicy. Mmh. Vraiment bizarre tout, toute cette histoire. En tout cas, elle est euh, intrigante. Il y a même des champignons. Euh... Oh Ah non. Donc là-bas, on est d'accord que. Ouais. On va rechecker. On peut pas. La librairie, elle est fermée. Je pense pas que retourner au musée va m'apporter grand chose, mais... Oh, watermelon <rire> ah, Elle est toujours en train de lire, elle Waouh Elle est vraiment bizarre cette compagnie, hein. vraiment vraiment bizarre. Alors je vais voir si je peux pêcher autre chose. Alors on smack. Luca stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. Those things always get dirty anyway. Donc j'ai pêché un bracelet, je crois. Ok, et on va essayer avec le truc qui pue. Luca wrapped a twig of thyme around the hook. 
Some fish have refined taste. Ah. Vous remarquerez donc que j'ai pas encore pêché un seul poisson. Hein. <rire> C'est extraordinaire. Il montre. Ok, bon, je pense qu'il nous manque encore peut-être un objet ou deux. On n'est pas loin d'avoir peut-être un poisson. Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times, and it always meant one thing. Rollo scoffed. Lucas stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Oula. On va avoir des troubles. Luca became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. Oh no. no. Rolo's tone changed to a calm, yet more intense, anger. Oh là, c'est une sacrée dispute là entre les deux. The words hung in the cold oh. night air. Rolo's stomach dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. But it was too late. Ah ouais. Trop fort, trop fort les mots. Bon, on va voir si encore des choses à. Mais fouille, fouille. Dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. Oh, we kick in on the barrel. Damn, Missy, it's me, in fact. Il y a un succès en lien avec un ballon de foot. Je crois pas. Oui. 
Oui, non, mais je sais. J'essaie juste de voir si y a succès en lien avec un ballon. <rire> mais je crois pas. En tout cas, c'est marrant. Non, bon, on va s'arrêter de jouer au ballon. On est triste. On est vraiment très triste. Gran cooed gently from the hallway. Luca just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. On joue au ballon ou bien What Non, alors définitivement, il n'y a pas de succès en lien avec le <rire> ballon de foot. Non, avec le melon. Enfin, la pastèque plutôt. Mais il n'y a pas avec un ballon de foot. Ok, bon, on va descendre. Hein. Ah non, alors apparemment pas. Bon. On va pas se recoucher quand même. Ah si. Ah bah si, apparemment. Still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. Donc on va rejouer au foot encore un petit peu. Ok. <rire> Ouh, on est trop balèze. The Adventures of Hank Atomic. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rollo had received it for his birthday, a special hardcover edition with behind-the-scenes commentary and bonus art. Rollo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rollo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind. But it had stayed right there where Rollo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. Ooh. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. Pas mangé ni matin ni midi ni soir. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. Et là, on est reparti se coucher, mais genre on a dormi toute la journée, quoi. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad. Where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source? Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, 
He was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow-gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame. See? Luca peered at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Tiny buildings, freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them! The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them. Not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands. Donc là, en gros, il est en train de rêver que son père et lui sont des dieux qui euh, sont en train de voir la ville de Beacon Pines en train de brûler. Et euh, le père dit qu'il ne veut pas les aider parce qu'il ne voit pas pourquoi il les aiderait puisque eux-mêmes n'aident pas vraiment les autres comme eux le font. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped, slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him, older, worn, distant. The sensation was oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Luca staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Welp, dad. If you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames in a flash of cold light. He was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. Ah. Rêve plein de bon sens. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his gran came into focus. Ah non, plus de blabla, s'il vous plaît. Gran silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. C'est un jeu où il y a beaucoup de blabla quand même, hein. Ok, j'ai bien dit que les amis, il faut pas... Il ne faut pas les aimer que dans les bons moments, il faut aussi les aimer dans les mauvais moments. Luca gave a reluctant nod. Quelle grand-mère pleine de bon sens. Luca took a deep breath. Ok. 
chapter 6. Voilà. On n'a pas été aussi loin. Hein. Là, on a, une, on a suivi une bonne euh, ramification, là. Through thick and thin. Despite Lucas' bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rollo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air. But the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rollo. Et il faut qu'on lui achète un corn dog. Roxy rolled her eyes, shaking her head. It's a riddle. Ok, donc ça va être un jeu de piste. Luca looked down and kicked at the dirt. Elle a des bras, je me, je me rends compte là, hein. mais elle a des bras super, enfin des avant-bras super méga musclés. Ça me terrifie. <rire> ok. Donc, une aventure que tu n'as pas besoin d'acheter et si tu es brave, va à un endroit silencieux. Mm -hmm. Une aventure que tu n'as pas besoin. Ah Est-ce que ce serait pas la librairie Encore fouiner un peu, mais... Trop des charmes. Est-ce que c'est pas la librairie Oh la vache, il y a plein de monde. Non, on peut pas le plus en... Mr. Kerr pointed to his grinning mouth. Give me the gift. <laughs> ok. Est-ce qu'on peut lui parler à lui Je crois pas. Non, je, je vous jure, moi ces bras ils me font peur. Ok, ok, elle va aller déguster de la limonade. Lui, il est toujours endormi. <rire> hmm, Qu'est-ce qu'on la connaît, cette personnage-là Ah, si Le connaît. Jeff turned to Luca with a furrowed brow, then gave an understanding nod. For a moment, the two now shared that same wistful gaze. Okay. Okay, dans cette version, on a abîmé personne. <rire> je 
J'aime bien se attacher des ballons euh, au-dessus d'une poubelle pour rendre la poubelle plus jolie. Waouh. J'ai peur vraiment beaucoup de monde. Ah là 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 là, c'est bon, c'est bon, je ne peux rien. Oh, on peut pas lui parler On peut essayer. became flesh. Okay. Là non, là non. Elle, on peut pas lui parler. Descendre en bas. Je vais juste voir ce qui se passe. Donc là, il n'y a rien. Là, il n'y a rien. Kick la pastèque Griffin looked away suspiciously. Ah ouais, ouais, ouais. <rire> C'est bien la librairie. <rire> J'aime bien le personnage qui recule. <rire> Salut. All right. Alors, euh... ah bah du coup, on m'a donné une belle piste. Donc, euh, effectivement, on va aller à la librairie. Alors, on va re juste rechecker les livres. Je crois qu'on est bon. Yeah Et on a le succès. Riddle me this. On a résolu une enquête. Kato straightened up and cleared his throat as if preparing to sing. Oh là 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 Ok. You may take... Ah non, prendre une sortie. Elle... Quand le cinquième roi mourut, il a besoin d'un tissu. Waouh Ah, attendez, attendez, attendez. Alors là, c'est une sacrée énigme. Alors, quand le cinquième roi... On prenne une sortie, il m'a été... Oh là là <rire> Ça, c'est plus compliqué Est-ce que quelqu'un a une idée Attends. On planet Farpool. Tu devrais prendre une sortie. Et quand le... Cinquième roi meurt. Tu as besoin d'un tissu. Waouh. Je vais réfléchir. Ok, alors attendez, attendez, attendez. 
Ah ouais, des livres à nouveau. Ah, ah c'est en lien avec des livres peut-être. Le roi est mort. Non, c'est pas ça. Attends, là, 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 là. C'est une histoire de roi. Oh, il y a les cinq partout. C'est une blague. Euh... Non. Luca grabbed the issue with self-help, a helpful guide. Ah, peut-être celui-là. Est-ce que ce serait celui-là Non, c'est pas le bon livre. Cinquième roi. Cinquième sortie. Ok. Alors, j'ai toujours pas... Je l'ai toujours pas. Non, c'est pas ça non plus, alors. Cinquième sortie. Ouloulou, ça c'est pas facile là. Luca grabbed the adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number four, from the shelf. Ah. Alors. Luca grabbed the adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number five, from the shelf. Ah ah. Est-ce que ce serait ce livre là? Ouais. He moved his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed. The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue 5. Ok, on a résolu... Euh, on l'a résolu celui-là. began flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. Rift. He continued flipping. Rift in grub. Oh, no, no. Carte. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. Rift in grub cart. Griffin. Oh là là, oh là là, eh. <rire> il fallait le savoir. Griffin's Grub Card. Eh, oh là là, j'aurais même pas deviné. Je sais même pas où c'est. Je sais même pas où c'est. C'est où ça Griffin machin. Obligé, c'est en ville. Vous lui fait une truc C'est par là. Ah, c'est ça Ah oh, Voilà. Before Luca could finish his sentence, Griffin handed him a corn dog. Luca shrugged. Taking a sizable bite out of the corn dog. Mm -hmm. Luca tugged at his cheeks, feeling something rough between his teeth. He reached into his mouth and pulled out a slip of paper. Oh no, no. He shook off the bits of corn dog to read the slip. A pick up when you need some pep. Near the fountain, up the step. Luca finished off the remainder of the corn dog. Alors, I pick up when you need some pep. Near the fountain, up the step. Ouh, attends, attends, attends. La fontaine quand tu as... Attends. C'est au café 
On a besoin de pep. Ah oh, On est trop balèze. Lumi waved his hands around sarcastically as he began. What takes flight but has no wings? Prends son envol mais n'a pas d'aile. Your final task a friendship brings. Huh. What takes flight? N'a pas d'elle. Final task of friendship brings. Est-ce que ce serait pas à la maison avec la fusée là? Ah là! Ah bah apparemment c'est ça. Sheepishly handed Luca the balloons. Oh, c'était un ballon. <laughs> Ça n'avait rien à voir avec une fusée. Oh, c'est trop chou. C'est trop mignon. Luca threw himself at Rollo, hugging him as tightly as he could. Galin. Mm -hmm. Allez, on va à la maison avec les ballons. Trop chou. Hop, hop. Ah, je vais voir si on aura fini de pêcher. Allez, on va à la tree house. for you to understand. Oh, no, no. If I am honest, I hardly understand them myself. But whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. None of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward. But if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've tried everything I've done. I did for you. Ok, qu'est-ce qui se passe là du coup I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. Luca folded the paper into his pocket and had it up the ladder. Luca was at a loss for words. 
but that was fine. Words aren't always necessary. Sadly, this was untrue. A distant rumble shook the treehouse. What up? It was not fireworks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Something as old and cruel as time itself. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! The big chill. A shockwave of cold tore through the room. A bitter, Success. unfathomable chill. Before they could react, it encased them in ice. Ok, euh, j'ai pas tout compris. Donc. Là, ils étaient tranquillement euh, dans leur maison, dans leur cabane, dans l'arbre et tout, euh, loupant la, le festival. Et se sont fait geler. Two boys. Reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason. Okay. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene in a silent treehouse turned statuary, in a town brought low by its secrets, since for the rest of time, the end. Okay, donc ça c'est une des fins possibles. <rire> J'ai même pas compris la fin. C'est-à-dire que cette fin là fait que en fait euh, ils sont gelés. Elle est hyper chelou cette fin. Et elle est hyper chelou. Non, ça ne peut pas être la fin. Il ne peut pas. Je ne vais pas accepter. Et j'espère que vous ne le ferez pas. Il y a plus de fins. Plus de possibilités. Je peux le sentir. Ouais, parce qu'elle est bizarre la fin. Nous allons devoir sortir de tous. Jusqu'à ce que nous trouvions celui qui fit. Ok. Donc. Alors, on va juste regarder toutes les fins possibles. Donc là, c'est soit... Ah, on a plusieurs fins possibles. C'est soit là, on flight. Soit là, on break. Ah uh ah -huh. Gauche ou droite Gauche ou droite Qu'est-ce qu'on fait On flight ou on break Mmh. On va break. On va break. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Luca stopped himself mid-sentence. Booba. <laughs> okay. Luca saw Beck skulking by the gate. the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. Ok, donc on a une fin complètement alternative là. was an excited whisper.
the mysterious figure retracted their mask. Hair pushing out from all corners. <gasps> grandma! C'est Grandma sous le... Oh là là! A chill ran down Luca's spine. His vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. Gran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Sick Grandma! Wow! What the? Chapter 5 What big ears you have! Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. Sur ce, je vous laisse. N'hésitez pas à vous abonner à ma chaîne YouTube ou à me rejoindre sur mon Twitch. On se retrouve pour la suite. D'ici là, portez-vous bien. À la prochaine. Ciao.